What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Mordheim. My name is Splattercat. Super stoked to have you here today as we hang out for a little while. We gotta survey the damage here. Everything that went wrong, we kinda gotta corral things. We had a big loss in the last episode. Our first big loss, and this is actually post-patch, and so the game has been buffed with regards to its difficulty. The enemy, they basically gave them, like, you know how in XCOM, the higher the difficulty, like, the characters just become, like, more effective? That's basically what they did. So he's injured right now. The points we can put around is I'll probably... Oh, I don't know. There's so many, like, fear checks and things in this game that I'll probably stick with random stuff. But yeah, as I was talking about, the, the game patched this week and got quite a bit more difficult. Even on, like, normal difficulties and things like that, the enemies perform outside of their normal capabilities now. They've got, like, flat percentage buffs to, like, various things to make the game a little bit tougher in single player because I guess people said that it was too easy and given our win percentage in this game maybe I'm inclined to agree I don't like losing but at the same time maybe the game was a little too easy so from here on in we'll probably start to see quite a few more difficult things happen I'll probably just go with leadership right there that's perfectly fine I I think that works for us over on this side let's see I don't think he lost anything I think we should be pretty much sorted out as far as inventory is concerned Oh, never mind. He lost his shield. I know I came in here for some reason. Just like leisurely clicking through things and trying to figure out what we have going on. I need to find myself a shield. And so there it is. Unfortunately, it's not as good as our old shield. Our old shield gave us 78% parry. This one's got us at 73. That's still a really, really good parry rate. The issue is that a lot of things bypass parry. And so Chaos uses armbands and things like that. Like, you can have issues fighting against parry. He lost his dueling pistols, so I think we're going to have to go ahead and swap that out. Let's go ahead and put those back on the spot where they go, because we've already put too many points into his ballistic skill anyways to not have him shooting at things. And so there it is. We've got him back up and ready to flow. He got robbed and they took his staff, but on the plus side, he got to keep his necklace, so that's not too bad. I don't think the game lets you loot armor. I think armor is the only thing in the game that has like permanence to where you can't lose it. And so anyways, we'll probably give him some weapon skill maybe. I we've, He's going to be in a fight, so we might as well just keep him squared away. I've got to apply a point over here. I'm just going to give him dodge, I guess, maybe. We could start working on other stuff and get the HP values a little bit more satisfactory. But if he's got light armor on and we go heavy, I don't know. I'm coming around to the... I mean, he's got too many points in at the moment. But hey, I've, I'm starting to come around to the... There's a wave of thought where a lot of people just put heavy armor on everybody, and then they just build everybody for parry. And in that way, you make it so that if you're going to get hit, I guess you get hit, but it doesn't hurt you, like, at all. Your melee resist should be pretty fantastic by the time you get there. But I've got so many points invested in this guy's dodge that I think I'll probably just stick with agility and... He's supposed to be a long ways away anyways. We're using him as kind of like an advanced scout to run around. I could put something into strength because I'd like him to fight every now and again. But it just seems like too little too late at this point. Toughness to give him some extra HP. I'm really dithering about this right now. Like mentally, I can't decide what I want to do. Probably just stick with the agility. Yeah, that's fine. Confirm that real quick so that we don't have to deal with anything else. Anybody else need to be equipped here? It sucks that he lost his blue staff. I hate getting looted in combat. It bugs me. It's one of those little pet peeves where I'm just like, uh, every time it happens, he's got his blue knife. He's got the blue shield. What I may do right here is I may swap his shield out and give the blue shield to the main hero character just because we can count on him to do a lot more wrecking ball type damage. Anyways, oh, I'm not on the inventory screen. You would be surprised how frequently that happens to me where I just have myself on the store tab or the inventory tab when I'm looking through the other one, and I just forget about it. He's really well equipped right now. If we could get him some blue heavy armor, I'd be a tad happier. There's the luck trinket right there. I was looking for that in the previous episode. Apparently it was a trinket. I thought it was a neck piece. Never mind. That explains why I couldn't find it. It looks like it greatly increases your chances of full recovery at the end of the battle, but you fall out of action, but you have to use it in combat, and it's consumable. Eh... It kind of raises your hero rating unnecessarily, which means that the enemy gets a rating increase as well. I'll probably just bypass a couple days here. I don't know how many days we have to go, but my leader is wounded, I think. So we're probably just going to have to skip a couple days. It's fine because our warp stone supply is good. I don't think we have to worry about shipments or anything like that for at least a couple of days. That did set us back, though. So at the best case scenario, you probably get set back a couple of days by a loss, which could definitely seal the deal and make you lose the game if you're already behind on a shipment. But... If you're ahead, oh yeah, by the way, it makes the game accelerate a little bit differently too. 
it gives your the likelihood of you getting average in like normal games are a lot lower as you level up too. It starts giving you only brutal and only hard missions, which makes it a little bit rougher because they get flat damage increases when you play those. Not like the AI gets smarter or gets like numerical advantages. They just start to hit way way harder, and they get better resist too, which can make it a little bit troublesome. Either way, though, what's going on here? I just want to make sure that I have everything where I want it. Yeah, I think we're looking good. I'll probably just deploy it right here. Okay, we really need to squeeze out a win right here. I I truly and we need a win very, very badly. And so if I can just squeeze one out, that'd be great. I'm not looking forward to deploying all over the place because we saw how that went last time. But it looks like we may not have an option. I'll probably have them try and regroup around here somewhere. I'm not feeling really amazing about our chances deploying. Give me... Actually, what's that one right there? How far away is that? Far enough away. There's no word stone around, so I don't really feel good about this side. I mean, there's no... The point of the game is to make money. I'm going to deploy all my heroes up there, by the way. With the wizard. There we go. Since they're closer to the enemy lines anyways, it'll give them a better chance of making it through. And then these guys will just deploy around the cart. Looks like we're up against Skaven on our first turn. I, that's pretty good. I think we can handle Skaven. Chaos continues to be kind of a wild card race for me whenever I face them. Sometimes, it, they, it seems like it's actually really dependent on what their random equipment is. If you get Chaos with a bunch of two-handers, it's almost like you lose by default. But if you get a bunch of Chaos who have, like, bows and other random stuff, it's not that bad. So it seems like playing to two-handers are their strength. And if you're fighting them on their own territory, it's very, very easy to get yourself into a nasty situation. We're going to go around the backside of this building. Hey, Gift of Sag... I mean, aside from the... point. It's a little bit of a disappointment that he lost his turn right there, but I'll take it. We're going to take them down this back street right here. And if we see any strategic opportunities, we'll do the best we can to exploit them, i.e. grabbing loot or otherwise just kind of profiting as much as we can from the situation. I think we've probably got a spot right here that we can duck through. My goal for right now is to be as far away from the Skaven as I can. Until we can regroup, and we can fight them on our own terms. I'm going to leave him in an ambush stance because I do like to play aggressively, and it tends to be a strategy that I stick to. Put people on their heels and kind of fluster them. Doesn't really help with the AI because there's no mental battle going against the AI. Yeah, their cart's right there. That leads me to believe that we have about two turns to get as close to each other as possible, to get in here for some battlefield snuggles. God, I don't know. After losing to RNG like that, I feel shook right now. I feel real shook. But, you know, the game's keeping me on my toes. I started to feel impenetrable and indestructible. And the game taught me a lesson. I did rage, though. I had to quit right afterwards. I had to take, like, a 25-minute... Ooh, they got a whole bunch of warp rats. We might actually have a decent chance here. If they're only running warp rats, warp rats kind of suck. They're not that good. I would avoid them. It's kind of like nerfing. Uh, the only thing they're good at is that warp rats can pick up the warp stone without incurring any penalties. They're, like, immune to warp stone. But, I mean, that's only useful in the beginning of the game. Once you get to the point that we're at, eh, it's semi-useful, but still, I would much rather have anything other than a warp rat. <laughs> the warp rats there, they tend to come with spears and shields, as I recall. I think they get a pretty fat damage buff, though, when they play on the part of the AI. The AI does cheat in this game, by the way. It cheats its stats. Its stats are pretty... Like, for example, a level 5 AI in this game will have the stats of, like, a level 8 player character. It is what it is. It's not something I agree with. It's not something that I like. And basically, the developers didn't, like, work on the AI at all. And so instead of, like, working on AI... What just happened? Did it just bypass my turn? What just happened? I'm confused. Oh, well. Down the street we go. Let's be friends, everybody. Perfect. And so once our group has been moved back together, once we've clumped like kitty litter under a fine spray of pee, I think we should be that. Eh, I think that simile went too far. I'm not sure how I feel about that simile right there. Yeah, their team's looking pretty bad. I think we got this. I'm not impressed. I am unimpressed by what they fielded so far. If they had gotten lucky and they would fielded something other than three warp rats, I think they'd have a chance, but three warp rats is pretty bad. 
They're pretty low point cost, terrible units. Got some loot up there. I'm gonna leave people over here. Gonna have him concentrate. And I'm gonna put him in ambush because his dodge chance is really shitty, so we might as well have him rush into combat if anything's gonna happen. Oh good, that's fun. Alright, well, Overwatch stance from here. I'll probably move somebody up in front of him so that he can't get hit. Still waiting for the regroup. And so once everybody's in a big lump, then I'll be a little bit happier. They're lump, they're lump, they're lump, they're in a pile. Is this everybody? I think it skipped his turn. Meinhof Schwartz, that would suck if he got grouped up on. I'm going to leave a character back here just in case that's what happens. No, he takes the last turn, I think. Like standing in the village square like, Come on! You can make it! And then, shah, He gets taken out by a dagger from behind. At least nobody died. Part of the reason I was frustrated is because you have to make so many wound rolls after a lost combat. And the wound rolls can really, really, really... I've seen people's seasons end. Like right there where, you know, you lose a fight with three people out of combat and all three of them roll death. You know, something really, really bad in RNGE like that. And you're just like, well, I guess we're back to square one, aren't we? Back to square one. I think they are probably, like, right behind him right now. So let's get him down the street. He definitely needs armor proficiency, though. He is the slowest member of our team by a long, long margin. You tend to end up fighting alongside your weakest members, too. Because the AI tends to catch them quicker than a lot of the other guys. Are they running double leader right now? Or no, they had a leader, and I think they have two... I think they have two of the Night Runners, and Night Runners are actually their strongest unit. In my opinion, when you play Skaven, you want to have an overabundance of Night Runners. I, I played them when I was streaming. I had multiple Night Runners, and it was the best. It was my jam. We're going to go ambush stance over here just in case. Sort of nerve-wracking losing like we did in the last round, though. It really is because there's concrete consequences. Just like in XCOM, there's like real consequences that happen when you lose. And you're just like, I don't want those consequences. Can I not have those consequences, please? I'm going to go with the delay right here. I want to wait and see what the AI does before I go any further. It looks like we're getting to take our turn, though. If we can make it down the road, there's a big war. I don't think we're going to make it that far. But there is a giant offering a warp stone back there. Okay, so there they are right there. Yeah, we're probably not going to be able to make it to the warp stone unless they've just got one guy randomly isolated over there. And we can bulldoze through him and just keep going. We do have the... We could steal out of their cart, though, if we're feeling potentially brigand-like. Not super impressed with my ranged characters so far. I really, I keep hoping that they'll step it up and start making some shots, but unfortunately it just hasn't gone like that with the corrosive miasma do, armor absorption. So it basically removes his benefit as a character. Okay. Acceptable. I'm going to go ahead and just leave him on dodge stance for right now. Given the positioning of our other hero, even the other positioning of our hero, unfortunately, I don't think an ambush is actually going to proc or go off. Hey, there's a hit. If you guys could stun him, that'd be cool. He's going to stick with ambush stance right there. Sounds good to me. I do wish that ambush was approachable from like behind or something like that so that you had to take facing into account. But it appears as though you get an ambush no matter where you are. That's one of the warp rats right there. Don't be deceived. He's one of the cheaty AI characters. And so he'll hit pretty hard if you give him the chance to. Normally, though, like, if, for example, my Warp Rats as a player would be way, way worse than their Warp Rats as an NPC. A new round has started. Round four. Unfortunately, this little coagulation or this slowdown over here is going to get us into some trouble. I wanted to wait for his corrosive tendencies to go away before we played around with... He might be able to land a charge over here. Maybe... Eh, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It is what it is. I found that sometimes I get lucky and I can creep up on them like that. 
and I can get a charge off, but it's also possible that the devs may have fixed it or something like that. Stick with dodge chance for right now. I don't think anybody's going to be able to get past right there and add to the fight. And if they do, you're not an expendable character, but you're not like a good character either, so... Well, look at that. Looks like we're jumping into combat. I was going to say, he might get three. Oh, that sucks. So there's a hit. We got Thanky Mange Hide. I figured at least one of those was going to miss. It's disappointing, but there's not really much you can do about it. This fight's going to turn into a pretty hectic battle if... I don't get some shots off right now. He's got a 66 from there. 83. Yeah, I go with that one. I'll take the 83 in a heartbeat. And we got a stun out of it. Okay. Whew. That stun had me worried. I don't want to lose that character right now. I would prefer not to anyways. Oh, you can fire twice? Well, fire twice then. Hell yeah. How did he get to fire twice on that turn? That was amazing. That was the best thing ever. Man, this guy is my hero. He just like single-handedly whomped that character right there. Took him out. Gave him a beating. That guy's got really bad dodge, though. His dodge is pretty miserable, so he's getting hit pretty hard. And the goal for right now, if you're wondering what my strategy is right here, I just want this guy to die. And then we want to force this guy into all alone checks. There we go. So if we can flip this around on him slightly, we'll be in much, much, much better shape. He should be able to get up before the next turn, I think. And it might be worthwhile to disengage him and just keep him out of combat, although it loves... Uh, we got another... Ah, oh, well. Unfortunate, but it's a warp rat, so I'm not that worried about him. Very, very low point cost character that's probably not going to accomplish a whole lot by the time the fight's over. We should be able to roll out on him. This guy can't even get his dumb ass into combat. Yeah, I was going to say, he's just so slow. Might be worth it to leave him with light armor for right now. I may swap him out of the heavy and put him in light so that he's not taking the deficit. Alright, we do have the advantage right now. We could definitely use a big win. Haven't gotten a lot of warp stone from the last couple of missions of the warp stone deployment. has been kind of screwy on the last two or three. He's going to die because he's going to take all three swings on him. And since he's stunned, he doesn't get a dice roll, I think. I think he just takes the damage. Yeah. Can't really be helped that much. Disengaging him is going to be our smartest decision. And then we just kind of sit him over here and give him dodge chance. And then I'll stack that guy in where he was. Basically, I just need to pull him out of combat and keep his head down so something bad doesn't happen to him. We're about to get our biggest block of attacks right now, and if they go well enough, we might be able to end the combat right here before it gets any worse. I prefer to keep our potential losses to a minimum. You got a better chance of hitting. Doesn't really matter. Both hit chances are pretty miserable. Gonna miss right there. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna switch weapons. I'm gonna put him into melee after this. We've missed too many attacks on this round, and so now I'm not really trusting the dice to get this done. I'm gonna go with overwhelming force this time around. On his side, not much of a chance to hit, so I'm not gonna depend on it. I don't know why hit rates are so low on ranged attacks in this game. For the amount of damage they deal, which is next to nothing, like negligible... It always surprises me. I don't know. You'd think the hit chance would be higher. I mean, we're talking characters right now with BS 10 and BS 11 missing every single turn no matter what. And unfortunately, it's just... I don't know. It seems lackluster to me. I don't trust it. We may lose Aldremus over here, too. I'm going to keep the knife guy back for surgical strikes. So that I got somebody in the back lines who can pop in, stab once or twice to finish a guy, and jump back out. 
Basically, I don't want him ever to take an attack back, but if he can jump in and finish somebody, it'll save me action points elsewhere, and I'm okay with that. There we go. We'll have him join the fight right here. We're not going to get a kill out just yet, but we're trying. Provided the dodges stay to a minimum, we should be good here. I hope anyways. A new round has started. A lot of these guys are unfortunately Why does he have an all alone nerf? He's not all alone. He's with other people. It's kind of odd. Oh, okay, so it's from all the Gotcha. He's got open wounds. I'm actually I'm just gonna keep him back here for right now. I'm gonna wait for open wounds to fall off. Made his all alone check, which is fairly incredible. It seems to me as though the AI's been making their all alone checks a lot more frequently lately. Like a lot, a lot more frequently. Like in the previous episodes, it seems like we're failing all of ours and they're succeeding in all of theirs. I'm wondering if there was a patch over the weekend or some because I haven't been able to rely on all alone checks at all. That's a major part of the strategy of the game. Now we have real issues. May I go ahead and start off? Okay. You get a bonus for being on top of something, but there's not really... A ton of roof space around here that I can rely on. Like our fifth 50% shot in a row without a hit. A little disappointing. Okay, not a little disappointing. A lot of disappointing. Uh, I don't want to use up all of his dodge. I want to put him in dodge mode after this, so... I'm going to leave it alone for right now. We're going to throw him into melee. His potential for damage dealing is a lot better if we leave him right here. Pretty disappointed by ranged weapons in this game, though. They're kind of lackluster. I might just be playing an army that does not do well with ranged weapons. Always a possibility, but... There's the 85% miss. I've been waiting for it. Gotta love RNG. Gotta love it. This stands right now. I think that guy right... Oh, they came up behind us. That's concerning. Yeah, take your counterattack. I mean, you're about to go down anyway, so you might as well get something in there. Stimulus. You're gonna loop my character again. I hate that mechanic so much. Right, so what do I want to do here? Can help back here. Or I can help over here. This guy's a lot more dangerous. Like, this guy's got to go because he's going to cause us some major heartache if we really don't deal some pain to him. And so I think I'm going to stick on this guy. There we go. He failed his all alone check. Perfect. Considering he's their principal damage dealer who's left. We needed him to fail that all alone check. I'm debating whether or not I want to put the archer into combat against him. Because he's going to hit really hard. Uh, I'm going to play it by ear for right now. Actually, he's in a corner. So I don't even know if he can disengage. Maybe forced into a rather disadvantageous position here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to put him in right here and hope that this guy fails the all alone check. Or that we got a stun, but I wasn't depending on the stun to happen. I was hoping for it, but not depending on it. He's only got like four melee skills, so his chance is actually hitting somebody right here. Not the best, but he actually he got a swing off, so it's better than he would have accomplished in range mode anyways. I need to stay on him right now, and he's got to go. 
There it is. Okay, so we got another one down. That's gonna free up my other fighter to go help out with that other combat. Perfect. Managed to turn that one around. Oh, really? They made their route check. Okay. But he failed his all-alone check, so that's good. Now get out of the way of that one. This one... I don't know if the game's turned a corner and just gotten more difficult or what's happened here, but... I definitely feel as though... It's gotten a tad tougher. The enemy seems to be fighting at a higher parameter now. Making more rolls, stuff like that. Go ahead and keep the damage on this guy. I'll probably put the two-hander on... Yeah, I'll probably put the two-hander soldier, Fingerman. I'll probably throw him over on that fight over there in the corner. These two should be all right. They've still got one hero on the field, which is a little bit disappointing. I still have no idea where he's at. But when he shows up, we're going to have issues to deal with. For right now, though, we're in okay shape. We can keep the damage rolls high over here. We might be able to survive this in one piece. And we keep the misses to a minimum, but... It's coming around. I think if Fingerman can come over here and finish this thing off, that's what I would hope for. Still, hit chances being what they are. Oh, good. He made the kill. Fantastic. Wait, why did we win right there? I'm not sure why we took that victory. They didn't make a check. Okay, well, whatever. I accept. That's perfectly fine by me. I just want to win. <laughs> After that last loss. God. That last fight was such a fluke, though. It was like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. One of our guys has open wounds, so he might be out for a day or two. So he's got Twitch. He's got three days to recover from that one. That's okay. I'll probably just drop him from the team for a little bit. Remarkable. And he's got a light wound, and so yeah, we'll have to put in Velton John and some other people to fill up in the interim. Oh, look at that. We got a new type of hero warrior. Let's find out what he is. I don't think I actually know what the new hero warrior is. Got a great axe right there, which is pretty cool. I'll take that, and we got a Bugman's Ale that's purple. I'll probably just sell it, but the other stuff's good. That's going to be our time for the day. My name is Splattercat. I will see you all later. Hi, do everybody.